Hello all, can someone write me if you can hear me? Can you hear my voice? Okay, I see that uh, at least uh, uh, several guys can hear me. So thank you for joining our webinar about the Power System Modeling Software EAPSM. So first uh, of all, uh, let me introduce uh, myself. Uh, myself, my name is Mantas. I am Energy Projects Manager at company Energy Advice. Uh, I am working uh, in the company for uh, uh, already five years. And uh, what do we do in this company? So basically, we are developers of uh, Power System Modeling Software EAPSM. Also, we are providing consultancy services uh, using this particular software. So let me introduce the software itself. Uh, basically, uh, we started from EAPSM electric version. So it's a power system modeling software for high, medium and low voltage networks modeling as well as calculations. So basically you can do calculations like load flows, short circuits and others. Uh, we will go through some of, of them uh, uh, during today's presentation. So it's the main topic of today's. Uh, however, later we added also additional functionality, addition, additional modules to the software, which is uh, EAPSM hydraulic, and this package allows to do calculations of uh, uh, fluids, uh, gas flows, uh, also to select the pumps, as well as to do thermal calculations, like for example heat exchanger selections and other. And the latest uh, package of our uh, software family is EAPSM Cloud, which is basically basically energy uh, monitoring and data analytics uh, software and several examples of uh, packages of uh, this EAPSM cloud solution so would be biomass boiler efficiency control, district heating network control, water supply network control and also other packages mostly very uh, applied to some industries where uh, uh, exist a big amount of data and this data allows to do control of the network to reach some kind of optimal point for example energy efficiency so these are uh, three different packages of EAPSM software uh, these are sep separate packages however they are very closely interconnected because uh, for example it's possible to simulate electrical and hydraulic networks at the same time and in real uh, systems, of course, uh, no electric system does not exist without the hydraulic system. So we have pump, pump is connected to a motor, motor maybe is connected to variable frequency drive, and variable frequency drive is connected to bus bar, which is fed from the uh, medium or high voltage network. So basically, this is the main idea about the uh, software family that we are developing. However, as I have mentioned, today I will concentrate mainly on the APSM electric so uh, where we are selling where we are renting our software so basically here are our main countries in Europe it covers uh, Baltic state countries Poland the United Kingdom Spain Italy uh, Malta here is also highlighted Turkey uh, Kuwait where we also have our branch office in uh, Asia in Asia we have a branch office in India in Mumbai so you can also contact them for software so if you will see that it's useful after these trainings uh, so as I have mentioned today I am going to talk uh, mostly about uh, EAPSM uh, electric and there are many functionalities regarding this uh, EAPSM uh, electric uh, package basically uh, today we will concentrate uh, most on load flow analysis which uh, can be applied for many different uh, situations it allows to uh, uh, for 
example calculate what are the voltage levels in the network what are the currents select cables uh, reactive power compensation also so many uh, applications uh, and some of them today I will show with examples and explanations then one big functionality would be short circuits and uh, later uh, next month we will have uh, another webinar about uh, also uh, protection coordination where we will use this uh, module more extensively then we will have also a webinar about uh, power quality where we will use harmonic load flow analysis uh, module which allows to select the best uh, solutions for power quality problems and uh, one of the biggest packages is also protection coordination so particularly using the APSM software the APSM electric software you can do protection coordination parameters selection uh, selectivity studies uh, then there is protection tracking which basically makes uh, selectivity studies mostly automatical so many many packages uh, and uh, actually some of them are, are even uh, a little bit uh, uh, different and you can find for example in softwares that are not related to electrical network simulation for example solar irradiance modeling so even with the EAPSM electric you can calculate uh, what is the annual yield of a solar power plant uh, so also electromagnetic transient analysis surge arrestor sizing so most of the functionalities are closely related and needed for uh, advanced analysis of electrical networks from high to low voltage uh, so today uh, during the trainings we more concentrate as I have mentioned about load flows uh, in uh, medium and also uh, low voltage networks so this would be my short introduction about uh, the software and uh, maybe we can go now to uh, software itself uh, and we can start our today's webinar so basically here is the uh, main window of uh, EAPSM software now as you can see it's uh, uh, empty window without no elements added so basically we have to start uh, uh, network simulation from something and before uh, going to that uh, I would like to explain uh, how electrical networks are constructed so basically what is the uh, flow chart of the electrical network so first of all an electrical network we have uh, uh, generators generators uh, uh, provide the power and basically active power as well as reactive power to the electrical network so for example generators provide the power in order to keep uh, frequency uh, basically in electrical network if uh, generator provided power is uh, equal to load consumed power so frequency is kept stable if uh, there is uh, some mismatch between uh, between these active powers then frequency either goes up or goes down so frequency uh, depends on how fast the generator spin and if generator is not fully loaded so it starts spinning faster and of course frequency goes up also generators they uh, control voltage in the network and voltage control is done by providing or consuming reactive power so uh, another part of the power one is active another is reactive so voltage control is done with the reactive power and and uh, frequency control, control is done with active power so there are many generators in the electrical network uh, uh, biggest generators that do frequency and uh, voltage control they are connected to big network big electrical network which is called transmission system and basically this transmission system is a high voltage uh, electrical system with trans which transfers power from uh, the generator uh, to the distribution network consumers so basically we have uh, then a distribution network and there might be many distribution networks uh, connected uh, uh, to uh, uh, this uh, kind of transmission system so I will draw only one but basically there might be uh, more of them and finally we have uh, uh, low voltage consumers so last uh, block uh, in distribution network there are many uh, low voltage consumers 
uh, so basically factories uh, uh, smaller factories because some of the bigger factories they have uh, also medium voltage networks uh, uh, inside uh, but all the other consumers and uh, most mostly all the motors are connected to low voltage network so the idea is why I'm showing this is because we have to decide where we start uh, uh, modeling of our electrical network so we can start for example modeling from this point and calculate on the low voltage side we can start modeling for example from this point and cover some of the transmission system uh, all the for example all the distribution system and then low voltage system so engineer before doing any simulation have to decide where is the starting point for example we decide that our starting point is here so we are going to design uh, during these trainings system from this particular point so how to do that uh, in most of the software is also in our software uh, we use uh, uh, so-called infinite bus bar infinite bus bar is basically equivalent model for all the transmission system plus all the generators that are connected to the transmission system so to that part which I highlighted here so in order to uh, find the equivalent model of this system we need uh, two basic parameters so one is uh, voltage level uh, voltage level is uh, uh, created by voltage sources in electrical network so basically generators as I have mentioned they keep some kind of uh, voltage level uh, so voltage level of this point where we start our calculation can be uh, different uh, during the day during uh, the night so it depends on network uh, working mode but for example if uh, uh, nominal voltage is uh, 110 yes uh, medium uh, high voltage side so basically uh, during the day uh, normal voltage can be like uh, 115 uh, up to maybe uh, 120 and and even higher so nominal voltage is not always uh, equal to uh, real voltage real voltage can be very different so but basically in uh, infinite bus bar which is used for equivalent of the network so we will have to specify real voltage of the network during different uh, operation modes and then we have uh, impedance which is equivalent impedance for the whole network transmission network also generators and uh, other distribution networks that are connected so if we apply basic uh, uh, laws for uh, series and parallel connected elements so of any electrical network we can calculate uh, uh, equivalent impedance and impedance is basically constructed of two parts so is, which is uh, resistance it's like active part of the impedance and also uh, uh, there is uh, reactance yes which is imaginary part of the impedance so this uh, is uh, uh, actually influenced by the uh, conductor diameters and this one is influ influenced by the uh, physical uh, uh, like uh, a physical lay down of the conductors what is the uh, length what is the distance between several uh, conductors on of different phases so these are two different parameters also if we have more data and we need to do more advanced simulation also we can uh, provide the information about the capacitance equivalent capacitance of the network however this parameter is less uh, used so this is the uh, explanation about uh, the infinite uh, bus bar and basically how to use uh, the infinite bus bar in our system so it's very simple basically we need to add the uh, first uh, bus bar to the electrical network we have to specify the nominal voltage of this bus bar so in this case uh, 110 uh, kilowatts volts uh, which I uh, choose before the trainings uh, and then we have to provide some uh, system parameters so as I have mentioned the uh, voltage level voltage level nominal is 110 but uh, during uh, normal operation this can be uh, uh, quite a different voltage for example 115 kilovolts uh, 
and also current uh, software also later uh, asks us asks uh, us to specify what is the short circuit current short circuit power or system impedances so these uh, uh, three things they are cl closely related because uh, basically using specifying uh, only one of them uh, you can always calculate other for example if you specify a current you know voltage so you can easily calculate short circuit power or so uh, system impedance in uh, the other case if you for example specify system impedance so then you can easily calculate power and current as well uh, so uh, let's uh, try to uh, input some uh, uh, real data to the network so I will uh, maybe uh, use snipping tool to uh, uh, copy uh, uh, information from one of the bus bar uh, which I prepared before the trainings uh, so what we have uh, voltage level uh, is uh, 115 uh, system impedance uh, first uh, like positive sequence is 2.3 and the reactance is 11 uh, about uh, the uh, zero sequence impedance so uh, uh, zero sequence uh, resistance is uh, 3.7 and zero sequence sequence reactance is 16.7 uh, we also organize detailed uh, trainings about the electrical system calculations so during uh, these trainings we explain also what are these uh, sequence values what's the difference between them and why they are used in the electrical networks today we have only two hours so I will have to skip some of the things so basically i will go back to the infinite bus bar one more time i will specify the exact uh, voltage in the electrical network i will choose uh, system impedance uh, specifying uh, functionality uh, system is uh, grounded in this case it's a uh, high voltage network which uh, in uh, this situation is grounded we see this by uh, zero sequence impedance and we can uh, provide information about the minimum uh, resistance uh, this uh, part here on the software is asked to specify uh, positive segments values so I will actually specify uh, uh, same values also for minimum and maximum but uh, these values might be different so basically you have to ask a transmission system offer operator in your country or in uh, that country where you are, you are doing uh, system analysis to get uh, this uh, data uh, so now we can specify also reactance uh, reactance values here uh, and also zero sequence the same data should be specified so uh, 3.77 same data for here 16.73 and 16.73 so we see that the zero sequence impedance and the zero sequence resistance is a little bit higher than uh, positive sequence resistance and impedance uh, let's see also the comments uh, someone is uh, uh, writing uh, that uh, there is some uh, screen problems so basically in YouTube you can change also screen settings uh, to any quality I am trans I'm doing uh, translation in uh, uh, full HD mode so if your internet connection is capable to tr transmit uh, this kind of quality so you can change uh, this in uh, uh, etap uh, you can change this in uh, YouTube uh, settings okay so let's push apply now and we have this uh, system equivalent uh, bus bar specified so uh, it will be different in uh, the network uh, by the color in our software it's uh, in uh, uh, yellow color and basically all the other bus bars will be in gray color so let's uh, add the next bus bar the next bus bar will have uh, same voltage level basically I will add only several several bus bars in uh, high voltage side I would like to go now to uh, 10 kilovolts network so uh, let's reduce voltage basically now I'm selecting from the list of possible voltages but user can enter any voltage level so we are doing a simulation of uh, uh, basically symmetrical three-phase network uh, so uh, um, if you need to calculate this kind of network so you just simply uh, input any uh, uh, phase to phase uh, voltage level here in the uh, settings of the bus bar 
so uh, two buses which has uh, different voltage level should be connected by the transformer in our system so I will use transformer to connect them and uh, buses with the same voltage level are connected by a line and the line can be cable overhead line uh, uh, different uh, connection options so we will specify this later on now I would like to specify 10 kilovolts network uh, so uh, you see at first uh, I will uh, draw the single line diagram and later on we will go to uh, parameters uh, specification so uh, let's add several uh, medium voltage bus bars I think uh, four bus bars will be enough for our analysis we can add uh, also cables uh, uh, which we are used further on for the calculations so several cables are here and let's also uh, uh, develop a uh, low voltage network so first uh, bus bar I will add uh, for uh, transformer again uh, let me choose uh, low voltage uh, value 400 volts again if it's uh, 410 or higher voltage level so you can enter any voltage level you want and uh, let's add uh, several uh, uh, low voltage uh, bus bars where we will connect uh, uh, consumers, uh, generators, capacitors and other equipment. So as in the first example uh, different voltage uh, bus bars I will have to connect uh, through the transformer. Uh, same uh, voltage uh, level uh, bus bars I will connect uh, through line. So using this line uh, option I can add uh, uh, several lines at the same time uh, without uh, going to elements panel repeatedly so here we go here we have the electrical uh, network now it does not look uh, very nice and tidy but we can uh, quickly uh, fix the situation so I need to make uh, uh, main bus bar a little bit bigger here a little bit bigger bus bar here so we will have uh, space to connect uh, all the elements uh, uh, with a reasonable margin and uh, we can use also uh, aligning functionality to automatically align all the elements so here we have the electrical network with two transformers basically network starts from a high voltage network then we have uh, four lines in uh, medium voltage network so it would be distribution network side and here we have uh, a low voltage uh, side it could be factory and and uh, uh, other object so I will make some uh, spacing also uh, you can uh, move uh, bus bars in software using right mouse cursor uh, highlight uh, several objects and uh, move using your uh, mouse so now when we have uh, the network specified basically the network single line diagram specified so I can save this uh, uh, example uh, so later on we can uh, uh, also use for uh, other analysis uh, let's save it uh, maybe in a uh, uh, folder for uh, uh, this presentation so where is the desktop desktop is here and uh, model let's say one so now we have uh, the single line diagram specified and we can go further on uh, to network elements specification so let's start uh, with uh, this uh, uh, high voltage transformer uh, I would like to specify uh, uh, first of all uh, information about the transformer uh, most important data which is needed for further calculations so the, to begin with uh, in order to do calculations with the transformer what we need to know so we need to know information about the impedance of uh, high voltage winding and impedance of uh, low voltage winding also uh, uh, voltage transformation coefficient uh, how much transformer changes the voltage so uh, this is the most important data that we need to know in order to calculate impedance so one way uh, uh, we can for example ask users to specify impedance by hand and uh, here we go we can do the calculations but usually uh, when you do uh, real uh, analysis in the electrical network uh, so you don't know information about what is the transformer impedance you only know the information that is provided on transformer nameplate so basically 
to provide the, uh, by providing this information you can calculate the impedance but doing this by hand would be time consuming therefore we created the software that only data from the nameplates can be provided and this data is enough uh, for us to calculate the most important uh, uh, parameters for further calculations so from the users we only ask information of transformer short circuit voltage so basically on any transformer nameplate you can uh, find this data uh, let's say for this transformer uh, if this transformer would be like 10 megawatt transformer so short circuit voltage could be uh, like about nine percent so I am now specifying these values from my previous experience uh, but uh, basically you can also find this data in the internet for each particular transformer uh, of course you won't find the two exact same transformers in the world uh, all the transformers are different and when manufacturer makes the transformer uh, he does the measuring measurings of uh, these parameters and uh, provide them, them on the nameplate so the best uh, way to get this data is uh, from the nameplate of the transformer then uh, we need the information about uh, short circuit uh, power so basically when we have a short circuit test then to the transformer we can measure uh, what is the short circuit losses uh, or other other name would be short circuit power and again we can provide this data to the software uh, this data is more hard to get uh, and no, uh, not all the transformers provide usually small transformers uh, they might not uh, provide this data on their nameplate so uh, you have to assume this data uh, as I say uh, better to assume uh, the value with uh, some precision uh, than to leave zero because zero is, is a very uh, huge error to uh, specify so for uh, 10 uh, megawatt uh, megavolt amps transformers let's say we don't know exactly but we can specify like uh, 100 kilowatt of uh, power losses during short circuit test uh, one more parameter uh, is uh, uh, no load losses again on uh, in software you can see these uh, uh, symbols uh, which allows you to uh, check what is the parameter needed so you can just simply put your mouse cursor on the symbol and software specify what data you need to enter so uh, transformer no load losses uh, I have already recommended data so I will leave it as it is uh, then we have transformer uh, uh, high voltage and uh, in this case medium uh, we can say low voltage winding nominals so a ratio between these uh, voltages gives us information about how transformer changes uh, voltage from one side to another so you have to specify exact data again from the nameplate and if you have transformer which says for example 10.5 kilovolt amps so you just have to specify it does not matter that nominal voltage let's say is 10 kilovolts you have to specify real value here uh, some of the transformers and particularly these uh, high voltage transformers they have uh, uh, tap changer uh, uh, tap changer uh, um, usually switch gears uh, which allows to change automatically uh, um, uh, gears which allows to change automatically from one tap to another so basically to change uh, voltage ratio and uh, uh, usually uh, these transformers have step from uh, 0 0.5 to uh, zero point from 0 0.1 even maybe so from uh, small taps uh, and uh, to 0 0.5 and uh, usually they have quite a lot of steps to increase the voltage and to reduce the voltage so already by specifying these uh, uh, most important parameters I have information about the uh, transformer resistance about the transformer reactance also uh, uh, I need to specify a uh, uh, more advanced data about the transformer connection so these kind of transformers uh, high voltage of the transformer uh, winding uh, usually is a grounded star so if uh, your uh, high voltage network is grounded so you, you can also select grounded star here and the medium voltage network usually it's uh, isolated neutral so there are, there are two options one is a star connection so if you select star connection of uh, low voltage winding so phase difference uh, most commonly would be zero 
However, uh, uh, in order to reduce uh, uh, imbalance of uh, voltages, uh, especially during uh, short circuits, uh, also delta connections can be used. And in case you have grounded star delta connection transformer, then this kind of transformer usually transforms uh, the voltage vector and the transformation uh, uh, coefficient, uh, like angle, how much the vector is transformed is 30%, 30 degrees. So this data is uh, actually allowing me to specify the model for the transformer, uh, which is needed for calculations like uh, power flows, short circuits, uh, harmonics, uh, arc flash, motor starting. So these are the main calculations. For uh, more advanced calculations like uh, transformer uh, launching and other, uh, you, you might need more data. Uh, however, for basic calculation, this data is uh, enough. So we can also uh, specify the transformer nominal power so that we can see this on the single line diagram. So now let's go to further uh, simulation of the network. It would be good to add some uh, loads. So maybe let's add uh, uh, lump loads. These are so-called uh, cumulative loads. Uh, they are not uh, uh, saying what exactly is connected here. Uh, these loads only represent what is the power active as well as reactive of the load. We can also connect a solar power plant uh, for power generation and we will have one task to do with solar power plant. So we have one more transformer unspecified, so elements that are unspecified and that are lacking uh, the necessary data, so they are depicted in red color. In our software, here is the indicator which shows uh, what parameter should be specified. So you can simply push on the indicator and it will show what data and which element uh, should be provided, because without it, it's not possible to do the calculations. So transformer data is yet not specified uh, for uh, this transformer also we have library which you have uh, which you can use so basically users are capable uh, uh, to s specify transformer by hand uh, create uh, the uh, library model and use this transformer for uh, later calculations or you can also use uh, the existing uh, library so for example I can select uh, one megawatt transformer so already I have information about the short circuit voltage, uh, short circuit power, main power, maybe connection point. Let's see if a connection uh, connection type if it's specified. So it's specified uh, in as star, so it's okay. But uh, I would like to specify maybe delta with plus 30 degrees angle. So here we have the transformers specified like automatically. Uh, this transformer might also have tab changer position and later I would like to show one example where we will use this tab changer. So therefore I will specify tab changer additionally. So for example, tab uh, step is 2.5 and there are two uh, steps up and two steps down. Uh, what's the difference between tap changer here and tap changer here? So that uh, low voltage transformers uh, they usually uh, don't have automatic tap changer uh, gear, so uh, user have to change uh, tap uh, uh, by hand. And uh, here these transformers they might have, and uh, usually they have automatic tap changer po position uh, gear. So basically they operate automatically according to uh, predefined voltage level. So after we have this data specified, actually it would be almost enough for us to do the uh, calculations. Uh, cable data will be assumed to equal, uh, uh, impedances of the cables would be assumed equal to zero. So for example, let's uh, specify uh, one load. Uh, 5 megawatt maybe, and uh, power factor. Uh, 0.9. So if I specify active power and power factor, software will automatically calculate what is the reactive power. It's also possible from Excel sheet to import uh, time series data for uh, the load. So you can specify, uh, for example, how uh, power of the load changes during the day or during a longer period and to then to calculate uh, uh, how this will affect network voltages at each time of the, uh, of the calculation.
but for this uh, uh, these trainings I will only use uh, uh, one time uh, like a single mode calculation option uh, so uh, specifying real and reactive power is enough for us and as we can see it's also possible to specify whether it is one phase two phase or three phase load so again as I have mentioned today we will uh, also mostly simulate symmetrical network so uh, three phase uh, loads will be used so I have specified one load and for example another load I can use my keyboard to copy and paste data from one load to another so uh, some of the features allows to do single line diagram development uh, much faster than uh, uh, by inputting uh, each parameter uh, one by one so now when we have uh, uh, several loads specified we can start to do calculations for example I can calculate power flows and the power flows will give me data about what is the voltage level in the network so we can see that voltage level is 104.1% uh, so our nominal voltage is 10 kilovolts and because we have a little bit higher voltage higher voltage we have because uh, our transformer uh, uh, low voltage winding has 10.5 uh, kilovolts nominal so uh, also our uh, medium voltage level goes up a little bit and normally uh, in uh, most of the countries this voltage is kept a little bit higher in order to reduce uh, uh, currents and also voltage losses and to maintain uh, uh, like uh, enough uh, voltage levels for the consumers and we can also see information about the current so current in uh, high voltage is 58.8 per amps so uh, it's high voltage side and uh, uh, medium voltage side current is much bigger it's 616 amps and the uh, power flow we can see it's 11.7 .7 megavolt amps and the power factor is 0 0.86 uh, these values are provided in red so they are provided in red because the transformer is 10 megawatts and uh, already we have uh, uh, almost 20 percent overloaded transformers so uh, with these uh, loads connected here so this is why transformer is uh, transformer ratings uh, here are provided in red color for example let's try to connect also uh, uh, some uh, uh, to specify data for our solar power plant so basically uh, we'll see that uh, power uh, flowing in the network will be reduced and uh, then uh, voltages will change also uh, power rating will change so solar power plant uh, real power I will specify uh, uh, 3 megawatts reactive power I will specify equal to zero normally uh, solar power plants can uh, also uh, regulate their reactive power as other generators in the electrical network but uh, for economical uh, reasons uh, um, it's best to work at maximum uh, active power and not the reactive power so we can see that uh, before the connecting solar power plant voltage level was 104.1 percent uh, uh, when I connected the solar power plant uh, the the voltage level goes uh, almost by half a percent up so because uh, we have uh, more power inside the distribution network uh, more power generated and we need less power from the transmission network so there we have a smaller voltage drop in the transformer so we see also that uh, definitely our power flow was reduced uh, currents also was reduced so what I would like to do next I would like to select uh, cables for these uh, loads also for uh for solar power plant maybe we won't select the cable we will do after we will uh, uh, estimate what is the maximum amount of solar power plants that I can connect uh, to this uh, uh, substation here so let me uh, uh, try to select uh, cables for uh, uh, medium voltage loads and uh, in order to do that uh, I have to double click uh, on the line which is uh, joining uh, main bus bar with load bus bar 
and here I have to specify the length so the length uh, now is uh, by default uh, 1 meter but of course in distribution networks we can have up to 10 kilometers even higher lengths so here I will specify let's say 10 kilometers by adding uh, uh, 5 and small k letter so already I have a length specified we can go further on to cable details so in cable details we have to select whether this is uh, uh, actually cable or overhead line so now we don't uh, know whether which of these uh, uh, basically user can specify uh, any of them so if it's uh, overhead line you have to select uh, tower type there are different tower types uh, some of them uh, for uh, volt so for small voltage level other for uh, medium voltage level so it depends on how many phases you have uh, uh, how they are distributed and you can by hand uh, also change uh, how your uh, distribution of phases on the tower looks like and this gives uh, information about reactance of the line so for cable uh, it is a little bit simple more simple like uh, you only have to choose a correct cable from the uh, library so i have a very broad library of the cables here for different voltage levels different cross-section areas different materials as well and uh, usually when you use the software for longer time so you are used to work with some of the uh, specific uh, uh, types of the cables uh, so you can use uh, uh, also searching functionality uh, for cables uh, so uh, let's select maybe uh, 120 millimeters square aluminum cable and we will see what is the permitted current of this cable so we see it's 10 kilovolts uh, uh, 100 millimeters 120 millimeter square uh, three cores uh, aluminium with XLP insulation so I will select this cable neutral conductor I will uh, highlight that there is it is not it does not exist because it's isolated neutral network so I have a B and C phases selected let's go to configure and uh, in configure tab I can calculate what is the permitted current for this kind of cable so first I need to specify what is the installation method so for example if it's uh, underground cable uh, buried in ground so I have to choose what is the uh, maximum expected ground temperature what is the burying death uh, what is the uh, ground thermal resistivity what is the spacing without the between the cable so if there is one cable so uh, it will uh, create uh, heat but all this heat uh, uh, will dissipate into surrounding if there are many cables so each cable uh, heat each other and uh, this of course reduces permitted rated rating for the cable so I can see that for 120 millimeters aluminum cable permitted current rating is 200 amps and uh, from the calculation I have uh, information that uh, real current is 300 amps so basically one cable will no, won't be enough if I will push apply so software will uh, depict uh, current uh, value in red color which by default means that uh, cable is overloaded and uh, it should not be used for this ty type of application so therefore I will specify additionally that there are two parallel cables so now we will have a total uh, uh, amperage rating of uh, uh, 400 amps and uh, because we have 300 amps here so uh, current rating will be enough and we can uh, use this kind of cable also we can use uh, copy and paste features for cables so uh, I, I am used to working to keyboard uh, to actually quickly copy and paste but uh, for uh, uh, like uh, teaching purposes I will show that in edit there are different ways you can uh, copy uh, and paste uh, uh, data so one of them is copy parameters and paste parameters to other same type elements so you can use uh, shift C and and shift we with your keyboard another copying and pasting uh, option is uh, copy the whole element like cable and paste it uh, in other locations so it will add additional cable this option only will copy the parameters so I can copy 
I can highlight as many other cables as I want and using uh, uh, shift V of my keyboard I can add the uh, same parameters same ratings for other cables for example for this load of course uh, this type of rating will, will be good because it's same uh, type of load uh, also we can uh, uh, maybe turn off uh, some data which is not necessary like uh, cable names provided by the software so for us it's enough to know cable type and after we will repeat the power flow calculation so what are the voltage losses we can see that uh, in this cable we have 3.2 percent voltage losses what are the power losses like here we have 166 kilowatt of active power losses current is uh, 300 the 13 amps uh, power is uh, uh, 5.7 almost megavolt amps reactive power is 0 0.9 so here we have uh, some uh, calculations already done and um, uh, we have selected also same cable for the solar power plant but because its power is smaller so voltage drop in this cable is only 1.7 percent so smaller than in this cable despite the, these are two same cables so software calculates voltage level according to uh, the connected load uh, let's also connect some uh, low voltage uh, uh, loads before going to further analysis so uh, there are several types of uh, loads uh, first i would like to show motor yeah, so you can connect uh, motor then uh, in low voltage networks uh, extensively capacitors are used so here I will connect capacitor then uh, in nowadays networks inverters so inverters uh, like variable frequency drives uh, uh, they are not only consuming power but they also create uh, current harmonics in the network and current harmonics uh, they create uh, uh, also voltage harmonics uh, uh, later uh, okay one bus bar we can leave spare we can uh, use uh, later on for uh, other type of loads so again uh, in all the cases automatical alignment uh, works uh, these loads uh, can be connected using a cool letter on the keyboard elements that are in, in red color uh, fully red color so means they are disconnected in our software and from time to time I can save also uh, the diagram which I have created so now I am drawing this diagram like on empty page uh, I can do the same thing uh, uh, on uh, uh, table like uh, title uh, page I can also add uh, for example uh, information about uh, uh, factory and ground let's say uh, from uh, uh, I can add picture from here so let's go to desktop mm, to webinar where I have uh, prepared uh, uh, one file for uh, like representing company grounding so here uh, I can uh, for example on company grounding plan I can have uh, uh, hydraulic networks uh, drawn I can for example add also information about panels so let's say uh, let me add uh, one panel to this network before maybe I will uh, lock uh, this uh, grounding plan and I will add panel so basically you can uh, digitalize the whole electrical network in the same way as I am showing you and uh, each separate panel you can uh, put on the uh, company's uh, ground plan here in the panel you can select for example what is the uh, particular uh, scheme connected you can give name for example uh, ps15 so uh, this is uh, panel uh, number 15 and here we have uh, the uh, panel connected in the network so later we can for example uh, open uh, this particular panel uh, with the single diagram inside the panel so let me show you this example so uh, when I added the panel and uh, uh, like 
created a link between uh, the panel and the sim so by like double clicking on the panel itself i can open the single line diagram for that panel so here you can see it's quite a huge single line diagram with uh, several bus bars uh, uh, loads uh, specified uh, cables specified also with uh, a title page so i would like to connect uh, this uh, uh, element this panel now to my main uh, single line diagram that i am now drawing uh, during this example so i will have to go back to the uh, previous model uh, here i will add uh, uh, so-called sub scheme element yeah this is a sub scheme element which allows me to uh, connect the panel 15 from the previous uh, like uh, uh, diagram which i have shown you from the previous uh, file uh, to this particular model so again i will have to uh, uh, load uh, uh, panel 15 uh, software will automatically import all the data about the bus bars and i can select which bus bar from that panel is connected uh, to mine to my main single line diagram so now you can see that uh, i have panel 15 connected here to the single line diagram uh, of my electrical network so it exists in uh, two places it exists uh, in this sub scheme element so i can uh, basically open it uh, from here and also i can add uh, all those panels on the company grounding plan and as i have mentioned together with all the other networks electrical and then so on so you can even create a electrical network basically on the single uh, on the uh, uh, like uh, drawing here however it will won't look uh, uh, similar to a commonly used single line diagram with uh, all these uh, uh, like uh, 90 degrees angles and uh, other uh, common things of uh, how single line diagram looks so now we can uh, uh, start our first uh, simulation of today so basically we have uh, uh, already a single line diagram developed with uh, uh, quite a lot of elements so uh, first uh, task which i would like to solve is to estimate uh, how many uh, what is the maximum power of solar power plant that can be connected uh, to this uh, uh, distribution network so how i will do this i will only use power flow calculations so let's calculate uh, power flows uh, first of all without the solar power plant uh, maybe the cable here uh, uh, cable here will add some uh, losses so we can uh, leave this cable or we can uh, maybe uh, uns unspecify the cable parameters for example i will enter one meter so we will have very small uh, like impedance uh, values so this won't affect our uh, calculations at all and later when we'll estimate what is the maximum rating of the solar power plant so then we will we will be capable to connect what is the ex exact size of the cable we need so without the solar power plant uh, our uh, uh, voltage level is uh, 100 3.8 percent so uh, for example uh, we have automation system automa automating uh, automatic uh, type changer who keeps uh, voltage level equal to uh, 105 percent so this is our task voltage 105 percent so basically in this kind of situation our uh, tap changer would uh, move by two positions basically if it moves by two positions we have a 106.4 so a little bit too big voltage level so let's uh, try maybe uh, another tap changer position yeah so we have 105.1 percent so ideal situation this is uh, what uh, our task voltage is and we need higher voltage as i have mentioned because uh, we want to uh, maintain a nominal voltage close to uh, consumers that are further away from the bus bar from the main bus bar so now let's see what happens if i connect uh, three megawatt of uh, solar 
generation so uh, I activate the solar generation and let's see how this will affect uh, the voltage level so I can see that the uh, voltage level increases uh, by uh, about uh, 0 0.6 percent so quite a hu huge increase however if uh, 3 megawatts will start generation so uh, uh, still top changer position won't move which is good uh, the basic idea is that we won't don't want our tap changer position of this transformer uh, to move uh, according to solar power plant generation because you understand that solar power plant generation it depends on uh, uh, what is the weather outside if we have sun so solar power plant generates the power however if we have cloud it covers the sun then generation goes uh, uh, very small very quickly so this uh, might affect uh, transformer uh, type changer operation uh, like normally transformer time change and operation should be like twice a day uh, during the day and during the night however with solar power plant with very powerful solar power plant type changer can uh, start operating much more frequently and uh, this is not adequate situation because it would cause uh, damage uh, uh, to the transformer so because of uh, uh, parts are wearing uh, because of moving so we have to uh, keep solar power plant uh, power below uh, transformer type changer sensitivity so now with 3 megawatts we can see that uh, uh, we uh, uh, increase the voltage by only 0 0.6 percent so transformer type changer won't react but let's say if we have 5 megawatt what happens then so with solar power plant we have 0.6 percent so it means that if our solar power plant disconnects so our voltage is 0.5 percent if our solar power plant uh, connects after for example cloud uh, is moving uh, from the sun and the uh, solar power plant starts generating maximum power the voltage will move uh, close to 106 percent and the transformer type changer would have to automatically reduce the voltage by connecting uh, different position so now we have 104.7 percent so this would be like maximum amount of uh, solar power plant that would be recommended to connect in this substation because otherwise for example if we connect even a more powerful solar power plant uh, so our top changer will move very frequently uh, depending on the uh, voltage depending on the the generation of the solar power plant so for example if we have uh, no sun so uh, type changer position would move by at least uh, uh, one position let's see yeah it moves by one position however when we have the sun uh, voltage increases over the permissible limit and top changer of the transformer have to reduce the voltage so this is a not not a good situation so limiting uh, power would be like uh, 5 megawatts and uh, during this example we have selected the limiting power for our solar power plant so the next examples uh, uh, next examples will be in uh, mostly low voltage network uh, so let uh, let's talk uh, more about the cable selection so uh, let's choose uh, let's specify the inverter power for example 100 uh, uh, kilowatts active power and reactive power for the inverter that might be 0.95 or even higher so in order to select a cable first of all we need to know uh, what is the current so we already done this uh, uh, simulation in uh, uh, medium voltage network uh, cable permitted current should be higher than uh, uh, current that is flowing uh, from the load so this is uh, one of the most important criteria how you have to choose the cable so for this particular situation uh, the current flowing in the network is uh, 147 uh, double click uh, on the cable again to open its parameters window and again we have to specify what is the length of the cable let's say 50 meters 
then in uh, details where are cable details we have to uh, select the cable type or uh, of course we can use other filtering uh, uh, options so for example I will select this cable type these are low voltage uh, cables manufacturer is provided here insulation PVC and uh, conductor material material is copper so for our load uh, let's uh, start from selecting 120 millimeter square cable and we will see what is the permitted current of this cable in uh, low voltage networks usually cable uh, uh, installations uh, conditions are different uh, they are not in the under the ground of course they can be in walls uh, other installations by here i will select cable ladders and uh, uh, let's say a number of uh, group cables usually is much bigger like five group cables so the permitted current would be 189 and uh, we have just calculated that uh, current which is flowing in the network is 147 amps so this is the first step how you need to select the cable and usually this step can be done automatically using the software uh, but uh, next steps that i am going to show you uh, they are very uh, hardly done automatically and uh, needs uh, uh, like uh, help from the user of the software to provide some specific uh, data so when we have selected the cable according to the permitted current so we are sure that this cable will uh, uh, maintain uh, uh, the connected load and uh, won't burn during normal operation however uh, whether it would be economically feasible to increase the cross-section diameter is of this cable so we need to uh, check this situation using hand calculations so we can see that uh, losses uh, in this cable are reaching uh, uh, about uh, half a kilowatt it's uh, 485 watts to be exact so losses are not that uh, huge however if we have like longer cables let's say uh, 200 meters yeah so still permitted current will be the same and cable will be selected correctly however voltage uh, like power losses will be two kilowatts so if we uh, calculate uh, what is two kilowatts uh, if this kind of load is operating like 7000 hours per year it would be 14 megawatt hours or uh, in uh, today's electricity prices in europe it would be over 1000 euros so uh, quite a huge amount of money basically the question is whether it's possible and how much it is it is possible to reduce these losses by increasing cross-section diameter of the cable so we have two kilowatts here what will happen if I will select a cable which is uh, 240 so this is the next uh, uh, cross-section area which I have uh, for example uh, one I okay I have also 150 so it would be the next I also have 185 so let's start maybe from a smaller increase to 150 so with 150 uh, let's calculate the losses one more time I see that my losses are reduced quite significantly and instead of 2 kilowatts I have 1.6 kilowatts so the reduction is uh, uh, 400 watts and again if we'll use calculator to estimate uh, what is the meaning of 400 watts per 7000 hours so it would be around 220 euros per year so so uh, if we increase the diameter of this particular cable uh, after several years uh, we will have uh, payback uh, so uh, simple payback time is uh, around several years for uh, uh, this uh, installation so basically I would say that increased diameter of the cable in this situation would be economically feasible so uh, softwares most softwares can do cable uh, selection uh, uh, automatically according to permitted current we also have this feature 
but uh, very small amount of softwares uh, particularly I don't know any software which could do uh, um, cable selection according to economical feasibility uh, why because actually you need to know what is the price of electricity user have to specify uh, what is the average uh, load for example here is maximum maybe load but uh, maybe this load is not working all the time at maximum so we need to know how to calculate uh, the average value or we'll specify time series data of the load uh, to provide uh, uh, like uh, needed data for uh, efficiency calculations and uh, basically any cable which is uh, higher uh, can be selected yeah all of them will uh, uh, work however what is the most uh, economical the most optimal uh, solution depends on uh, particularly your situation so what is the voltage what is the current uh, what is the price of electricity and many other options so uh, for cable selection uh, again you can use the software because doing calculations here as you can see uh, goes uh, quite fast and um, uh, basically uh, you can uh, make many iteration iterations uh, to select uh, uh, the most optimal solution a uh, very short example regarding the hydraulic part so as i have mentioned in the beginning uh, uh, of the my of my presentation so in our software uh, it is possible to design not only electrical networks but also hydraulic networks so uh, uh, my task now is uh, to select motor for uh, pump so i will specify the pump first of all i will calculate what is the power needed by that uh, pump and according to the power I will specify uh, the motor power so here is the uh, task which I would like to solve so let's take uh, uh, the hydraulic elements uh, panel and uh, first we need to specify the pump so let's say uh, uh, the pump uh, uh, takes water from some point here and uh, transmits uh, to point here yeah, so here is the pump model uh, I can go to a library of the pump and uh, we can see that here I have quite a lot of uh, again uh, manufacturers so here is the library of different different uh, pumps and if I'll select the uh, Grundfos pump so here are the uh, characteristics of the pumps so again I won't concentrate on them because uh, we have like different topic of today's trainings uh, now we can uh, draw uh, pipes uh, on our uh, company's uh, background so for example we can uh, draw uh, the pipe from this point uh, to this point and also we can specify that this pump is connected to this location and here we have some uh, consumer uh, connected so uh, basically this consumer has uh, some uh, diameter so diameter of the consumer uh, would be let's say 100 millimeter square coefficients of uh, uh, basically uh, how how flow is uh, uh, reduced so we use special coefficient which depends on the consumer type so i will uh, specify this uh, uh, by hand and i need to select uh, what is the type of uh, flow so in this case it's water so now i have uh, the consumer specified and uh, let's uh, specify the pipes so the pipe uh, the rating here let's say 200 meters and the nominal diameter uh, 200 uh, the end 200 so here is the pipe specified again uh, we need to specify for particularly this pipe what is the flowing material in this case it's water and uh, I will specify one more pipe uh, and again uh, with the uh, length let's say equal to uh, 100 meters so I have this uh, pipe specified finally we need to know also what is the uh, source of the water so how much uh, what uh, what is the primary pressure from which uh, our pump is operating so let's say it's two bar 
so we have almost specified the hydraulic network I will also specify the uh, nominal uh, pressure let's say equal to 5 bars so here we have the hydraulic pressure uh, the hydraulic uh, network and we can perform calculations of uh, uh, water flows in uh, this hydraulic network here so we can see that uh, water flow is uh, 468 uh, efficiency 73 percent i will go to summary to estimate what is the uh, power of this pump so i can see that this pump consumes uh, 74.5 kilowatts of uh, mechanical power so now according to this uh, I can select my motor so my motor should have a higher power rating than 75 than 74.5 kilowatts usually uh, motors are connected uh, uh, let's see what uh, here is the motor library so I double click on the motor go to library I can uh, again filter my motors uh, according to number of poles uh, I can uh, use uh, uh, like uh, uh, also sorting functionality to sort motors according by power or voltage level so you can see we have quite a huge library of different power motors uh, what I am looking for is 75 or a higher voltage or higher power uh, 50 Hertz uh, low voltage motor so basically we can see that uh, one nominal is 75 however uh, it's very close to mechanical power of the pump so uh, it would not be uh, feasible to select 75 the motor can be overloaded so I will select uh, 90 kilowatts for the motor so uh, software automatically will specify uh, what are the uh, like uh, uh, most important parameters for this motor that we will need for further calculations and here I can now connect uh, my motor with my pump so I can see that there is one motor already selected pump is selected and we can start uh, performing electrical calculations based on hydraulic calculations that we have here so if I now launch uh, uh, power flows uh, calculations so I see what is the power rating here so it's uh, very small let's check uh, if uh, uh, my motor is selected correctly maybe before that we need to also repeat hydraulic calculations so that data from uh, the pump will transmit to the motor and now when we will repeat the calculation so all the data will be in place yeah so we can see that uh, my motor consumes uh, 78.6 kilowatts yeah, so uh, we have some losses in the motor because the mechanical power of the pump is 76.4 kilowatts definitely our motor is not overloaded because it is a 90 kilowatt motor so uh, uh, reactive power of the motor is 8.7 power factor here is provided so basically the motor is selected in the correct way so for uh, engineers who are working in factories so using the software you can basically also not only digitalize your electrical network but according to uh, pump uh, type uh, according to pump information you can select the correct motor for the specific pump and again uh, when you have the motor selected then you can uh, do further analysis and for example do cable selection so you can uh, open the uh, cable uh, parameters window specify again uh, what is the length of the cable uh, what is the uh, possible cable type we can use again the uh, same uh, cable type as in the previous example uh, maybe 120 millimeter square uh, copper cable so we can see that uh, permitted current is not exceeded because uh, here a current is provided in blue color not in red so losses in the cable are 716 watts so quite uh, normal uh, also uh, uh, voltage losses in the cable are 0.8 percent so again quite normal 
what is also interesting uh, about the software is that you can actually make even more advanced uh, uh, analysis so for example this motor now is connected to particularly this pump uh, you can connect this motor through variable frequency drive and you can change its speed and you can uh, uh, validate and check uh, how uh, uh, flows uh, are changing in the hydraulic network so as I have mentioned uh, these networks are fully interconnected and also if I'll for example uh, uh, change the value of uh, uh, the load somehow let's say I will uh, reduce uh, the diameter of the load uh, Yes, so what will happen instead of 472 uh, cubic meters per hour, I will have uh, uh, basically a little bit smaller uh, rating, yeah, so instead of uh, 470 it's uh, 384, so because of that I have a smaller uh, uh, active power requirement of course my uh, pressure increased so active power requi requirement is calculated according to flow and pressure and my motor will react to this so basically motor consumption will also change according to all the changes in the hydraulic network so this is the analysis of uh, uh, electric and hydraulic networks using only one software so basically you can use the software to digitalize all the engineering systems in the factories in uh, medium voltage networks in distribution networks so um, this is the main difference between other softwares and our software so now let's solve one more electrical uh, task uh, so let's see uh, what is the reactive power flow going in the network and what I would like to do so I would like to uh, select capacitor size to compensate my reactive power so I can see that uh, through the uh, in this transformer uh, power flowing through the uh, transformer is uh, 645 kilowatts so this is the active power but also I have some part of reactive power which is uh, 252 kilowatt reactive power factor is 0.93 so it's uh, not that bad but still we can uh, reduce uh, uh, reactive power flow and of course uh, this will help uh, for us uh, to reduce uh, uh, voltage drops in the transformer so we'll see that this voltage will increase a little bit so uh, it's very easy using the software to select the capacitor because we see the uh, reactive power required it's 250 kilowatt uh, basically so in the capacitor we can enter the required reactive power of course it's also possible to specify each capacitor step and later you can do harmonic analysis harmonic resonance calculations but these topics will be covered in other uh, trainings of our uh, software so now when we have capacitor connected let's uh, calculate uh, uh, what is the voltage uh, rating so it's uh, 104 percent so we can see it's uh, higher because before uh, the capacitor it was uh, 102 percent so 2.4 so uh, to be exact uh, capacitor allows me to increase uh, uh, voltage by 1.6 percent so quite a good thing and uh, why this happens uh, because as i have mentioned when i connect the capacitor power flow through the transformer is reduced we see that power factor is now 0.999 so very good power factor let's check let's check what are the uh, losses in uh, uh, this transformer so we have to go to a uh, branch uh, settings uh, and here we have uh, uh, the transformer uh, losses are 3.1 kilowatt in one winding and about three kilowatts in another winding if I disconnect uh, the capacitor yeah and I will repeat the calculations one more time so when I go to the report I see that losses in each winding are by around 0.6 kilowatts higher so by connecting the capacitor I also reduce losses in the transformer by around 1.2 kilowatts which is a very good result 
however we can uh, make this analysis even uh, more interesting by trying to connect capacitors to other locations of the network so now I have connected all the requirement of reactive power only to this uh, bus bar but for example let's see if part of the reactive power will be generated uh, uh, in uh, other locations so I will connect uh, one capacitor to this bus bar so I can see according to load specify specifications that I need around 30 kilowatt of uh, reactive power uh, so what will happen basically I will uh, locally create the required uh, rec uh, reactive power here and uh, because of this uh, I won't have to uh, consume reactive power uh, actually from the network therefore losses in this cable will be reduced so with capacitor my losses are 1.1 kilowatt and if uh, I disconnect the capacitor I can see that my losses are 0 0.3 almost a kilowatt so by uh, 200 watts I can reduce active power losses by connecting capacitor here and here then I can reduce the capacitor bank power basically i need to connect it first of all to provide to make the calculations so here we have uh, uh, selected motor yeah we have selected capacitor uh, we have uh, also connected one capacitor uh, close to the load in order to reduce losses in the cable uh, what uh, uh, is the next analysis that i would like to do so is uh, to select optimal transformer type changer position uh, for my uh, network low voltage network here so the idea is uh, this that basically uh, all the equipment in the electrical network especially motors uh, they work best at nominal voltage especially if they are loaded to nominal load so like here uh, our load is very close to nominal load of that uh, motor we can see this for example in load properties so uh, nominal uh, nominal load of this motor is 289 newton meters and our motor is 228 newton meters so the motor is connected uh, co selected optimally uh, not uh, oversized and uh, not undersized uh, so therefore this motor will work uh, most efficiently at nominal voltage which is uh, 400 volts yeah so our main goal is to maintain uh, nominal voltage uh, for our loads however the problem is that one loads are connected further away from the transformer than others therefore we have different uh, voltage losses in different lines so how to uh, select optimal type changer position when we have these different uh, uh, voltage drops so it can be done only by doing uh, simulations of several network operation modes and checking what is the best situation for our uh, motor also we need to select a cable uh, for our transformer so to represent uh, a realistic situation where we will have a voltage drop so let's say cable is uh, quite long uh, seven kilometers uh, and there is only one parallel cable so when we provide the calculation so we see that uh, we have a uh, one percent of voltage drop so maybe even cable diameter could be reduced uh, uh, to have a more representing situation so let's say instead of 120 i will select 95 millimeter square to make the task even harder so voltage drop is even uh, bigger now uh, so in low voltage side our uh, uh, voltage level is uh, uh, 0 0.2 uh, 102.8 percent uh, for motor we have uh, 102 percent uh, for capacitor 102.8 percent and for the inverter here 101.6 almost 0.7 percent so this is the maximum voltage level uh, when we have solar power 
land connected however during the night for example when uh, solar is not uh, shining so uh, voltage levels in the network will go down so uh, our voltage in uh, uh, low voltage side will also go down a little bit so it's 101 uh, 101 here and 100 here so at night i would say that situation is very optimal uh, where i see the problem is uh, during the day uh, where uh, some of the uh, voltages are quite high for example this uh, voltages are quite this voltage is quite high of course this is because we haven't selected cable here uh, also this voltage for this motor is two percent higher so uh, what i would like to see uh, if uh, reduction of uh, voltage uh, would allow me to maintain uh, closer to nominal voltages during uh, uh, day and night operations uh, so when i have a solar generation connected and when it's not connected so i now reduced uh, the tap changer position as you have seen so i can repeat the calculation i can see that uh, now uh, the uh, voltage here is 100 percent here uh, the voltage is 99.3 percent so very close to 100 percent for the inverter here i have a voltage level of about 99 percent and this is a maximum voltage so when i disconnect the solar power plant i can see that uh, my voltage here goes down uh, voltage here is 98% so almost 2% lower than nominal not very good and here is also 2% lower than nominal which means that actually reduction of transformer type changer position is not helpful because uh, then during the night operation when we have we do not have generation in uh, the network so these voltages go down which is not good so normal uh, uh, step would be the most optimal solution in this case it allows uh, to maintain voltages by plus or minus one percent from nominal value so in this case uh, uh, zero step would be the most optimal solution so this would be uh, one more example of electrical uh, network calculations so we have already calculated uh, uh, how solar power plant affects the voltages in the network this is uh, one of the most important uh, uh, calculation when you do uh, solar uh, power plant integration study we selected the motor calculated voltage levels also selected optimal voltage level uh, in uh, uh, in the low voltage side and selected capacitor bank so even during this short amount of time we did uh, quite uh, a huge amount of uh, different different uh, solutions uh, what is the additional uh, task that I would like to show so uh, in this software besides uh, hydraulic uh, and AC network calculations you can actually also design uh, uh, DC networks so uh, I will connect uh, uh, DC inverter so this is the uh, inverter uh, with uh, as you can see two uh, nodes uh, one node is uh, plus another one is minus so this is DC side of the inverter and this is AC side of the inverter and now I can draw uh, DC part of the network so I will add uh, uh, nodes uh, uh, in uh, DC side instead of bus bars uh, we use uh, nodes but uh, of course these uh, nodes can be also uh, increased over in the size and they can become also like bus bars and I will clear I will also connect cables uh, from uh, one node to another here I will use uh, uh, cable uh, um, aligning functionality to create a nice looking uh, small uh, DC network so basically in this uh, DC network what I have to specify uh, so is uh, inverter type uh, 
Uh, also uh, here you can as you can see I have connected the solar uh, uh, power plant so solar PV modules so uh, I will have to specify number of the modules and also type of the modules as well uh, so for the uh, inverter double click on the inverter uh, we can go to um, uh, DC inverter uh, model selection tab and this is the basically most important uh, thing that we have to do so is to select uh, type of the inverter so we can see that uh, uh, the, uh, there are many different types of the inverters so actually many manufacturers uh, there are around uh, uh, 3000 almost 4000 different inverters in the library so I will select uh, this uh, for example inverter 675 kilowatts it can work in uh, 50 Hertz as well as 60 Hertz networks and in uh, DC side it can maintain voltage from uh, 610 to 875 volts so now the voltage output I will uh, uh, set to 875 but later on we will uh, go back here and we'll have to change uh, the voltage output according to maximum power uh, generation of the solar power plants so uh, my uh, uh, solar power plant is here uh, in DC side uh, when I double click on the uh, PV modules so it opens PV modules specification uh, specification properties window and again here I have to choose uh, uh, the information about uh, solar uh, PV module so in library we have over 15,000 different modules that again are used in uh, uh, all the world so just simply from the library you can uh, select uh, uh, any uh, PV module and use uh, for your calculation these libraries comes uh, uh, for uh, users uh, despite uh, actually the license you buy so whether small license uh, big license or full license with many bus bars you will still get all the libraries so let's say I will select uh, this brand uh, uh, PV module and uh, next that I have to specify a solar irradiance so solar irradiance now is set to 1000 which is kind of maximum uh, solar radiation you can get on the ground uh, like in uh, 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 universe you, you, like uh, outside uh, the earth uh, so you can get over 1300 uh, watts per square meter here on the ground it's around 1000 and temperature so it's 25 so uh, also modules in series so normally there are like from 25 to a um, uh, bigger number of uh, uh, modules connected in series and this depends on what is the uh, voltage for the module what is the maximum power uh, point voltage so for this module it's 35.7 volts so basically if I will connect uh, uh, 35.7 multiply by 25 so it will be uh, 892 uh, uh, volts yeah, so this is the uh, voltage that I would have to uh, keep in order to reach maximum power from these modules uh, also uh, how many parallel uh, strings I have to connect I can set here so now it's only one string so with 25 modules and the power of each is 275 so uh, power is 6.8 kilowatts so basically I can connect like uh, 100 uh, uh, parallel modules uh, which uh, in total will be capable to generate around 687 uh, kilowatts so here we'll specify 100 uh, parallel uh, strings so now when I have uh, uh, this kind of system specified I can uh, problem I can perform DC power flows calculation and what it helps me to do so first of all it helps me to estimate what are the currents in the network what are the voltage losses so of course now because uh, cables are still not selected so uh, this data is not very uh, useful later when we will select the cables uh, of course this data will be more useful uh, we also have information about the power provided by the inverter and we can see it is equal to uh, 
29. Quite good, probably my solar power plant is operating close to its nominal and maximum power point. So here in this chart we can see a, a power to voltage uh, curve which is a green colored uh, curve and uh, uh, also we have operation point which is a yellow colored uh, line and we can see that this line is very close to maximum power point but we can even uh, increase uh, uh, the power a little bit more uh, by increasing the voltage output in the inverter so usually inverters with maximum power point tracking uh, they do this uh, kind of analysis uh, and automatically they estimate what is the uh, maximum uh, voltage they have to provide so that solar power plant will uh, uh, generate maximum power and uh, when I have increased the uh, uh, the uh, voltage value I can see that my power also increases and uh, my operation point is now even closer to uh, maximum uh, power point so for cable selection like in the AC network we can do it by hand as well uh, as automatical cable selection features so maybe for this uh, side I can uh, show you automatical cable selection feature so simply I will highlight the cables I will uh, select uh, the uh, layout of the cables uh, so because uh, solar installation probably will be somewhere on uh, the roof or it can be on the ground depends how your uh, uh, solar uh, where your solar is installed let's say I will assume a ground installation with some ground temperature number of group cables so because each cable heats each other uh, spacing between the cables so uh, the rating factor is uh, quite huge uh, 0 0.669 uh, so when I have the rating factor calculated uh, also we can use some safety margin and now it's 1.2 so from the uh, list of our cables uh, I can select what is the uh, optimal cross-section diameter according to permitted uh, permitted uh, current so it's 300 millimeters uh, square so I can push apply software will automatically apply uh, these cables here and uh, okay I can see there are uh, several cables connected in parallel so because the current is very high and we also need to uh, select and like specify the length uh, length won't be uh, maybe very big here because uh, of course uh, the solar power plant will be constructed of many strings so uh, if uh, this kind of uh, analysis is needed so using uh, EAPSM you can uh, analyze the full uh, uh, network model with each string uh, specified separately so and when cables are specified uh, I can uh, also calculate uh, power flows in uh, uh, AC networks so I can see that now uh, power flowing in flowing is to different direction so these uh, blue arrows are showing uh, active power flow and now active power flow is to the network so despite all these loads that are connected here because I have this powerful solar power plant here so it exceeds uh, uh, the power consumed by the loads and now power is generated to the network uh, voltage level is also quite high so basically with solar power plant it would be possible to uh, reduce voltage with a tap changer but of course uh, don't forget that during the night uh, solar won't shine and voltages go down so you have to check uh, uh, that uh, voltages to near to the consumers are not exceeding the permissible limits and uh, you can operate in this kind of network so without no restrictions so here are uh, basic calculations of uh, different networks uh, DC network, AC network and also hydraulic network so as you can see with software you can connect uh, many uh, different uh, uh, networks but normally in, in real uh, systems, in real scenarios they are working in uh, this way they are interconnected and affect each other therefore uh, the possibility to design uh, systems with one software is a very good 
thing and also uh, uh, when you buy the software of ours so uh, you get all the electric features for one price so we do not uh, differentiate DC or AC modules so if you buy the electrical part software so you get uh, DC plus AC for one price uh, hydraulic comes as another package but as you can see it's uh, in the same uh, software we just simply activate uh, the hydraulic features and uh, you get them for your calculations uh, next example uh, that I would like to show uh, would be regarding uh, the uh, subscheme element I think that it, this would be the last uh, example that I will show today after the example I will just uh, look uh, quickly through your questions and uh, maybe some of the questions I will be capable to answer uh, otherwise if I won't uh, manage to answer uh, uh, because of time restrictions so we will uh, uh, make sure to answer you by email so you can provide your email also on YouTube chat or send the question to info dot uh, info at uh, energy advice dot uh, lt so uh, about the subscheme element and how to uh, simulate this kind of element so as i have mentioned the subscheme element here is covering uh, different uh, single line diagram yeah, which is uh, developed in another uh, uh, another file and basically uh, why we need this kind of element because when we have huge networks so if you design all the single line diagrams in one uh, uh, workspace so it will be uh, very overcrowded with elements and it will be hard to operate uh, so therefore it is better to divide networks and uh, to use uh, this kind of sub scheme uh, simulations and then there are several ways on how you can perform uh, calculations so for example we have this uh, uh, single line diagram here uh, basically in my main uh, network I can calculate uh, uh, as if those networks are connected in one workspace so I can actually analyze each bus bar using this subscheme element so when I launch uh, power flow calculations so software calculates not only this single line diagram but also a single line diagram which is inside the subscheme element However, if your network is especially uh, huge and uh, analyzing all those uh, subscheme elements uh, would be uh, too hard, uh, it would take uh, too much time, uh, you can use uh, automatic uh, equivalent generation feature. So I can calculate scheme equivalent. So basically software automatically estimates uh, what is the total power consumed active as well as reactive of all the loads where which are connected in this subscheme element also losses uh, in the in cables and all the other parameters and uh, connect this element as one uh, uh, actually as one element for example like motor yeah so motor it has its active reactive power so in the same way now uh, this uh, element also has its active and reactive power for short circuit calculations uh, we also uh, estimate what is the resistance reactance ratio for this network uh, what is the short circuit current so if there are any generators inside the, the equivalent uh, subscheme elements so software will automatically estimate this also what is the capacitance so what is the zero sequence uh, resistance and reactance so all this data is automatically estimated and when you perform calculations so basically you will get same results the just calculation Will, will be done uh, in a quicker way so uh, previously I haven't used equivalent so I can deactivate equivalent now I calculate uh, each networks as if they are connected so uh, our calculations are done now in this way uh, one more option how to do calculation so I can uh, take parameters of equivalent uh, uh, impedance uh, equivalent also voltage of this uh, whole network yeah and I can create an infinite bus bar inside uh, this uh, subscheme element so for this reason, reason I have uh, calculate uh, system equivalent and save into file feature so it automatically estimates uh, equivalent data for bus 11 uh, here and it automatically uh, inputs that data to 
uh, infinite bus bar of that next uh, single line diagram so then actually I can calculate each single line diagram separately so as you can see the software is uh, designed for calculating very huge uh, uh, network so when I open open infinite bus bar here which is now created so I can see that I have information about the short circuit currents maximum minimum maximum also ratio between uh, uh, reactance and resistance system impedances are also all automatically specified as well as uh, zero sequence data as well as capacitance so all the data automatically comes from the network there to the network here and I can continue my calculations for example in this network for example I want to calculate short circuits here so I can easily calculate uh, uh, for example in any bus bar software will estimate what is the short circuit current and it will be the same result if, if, as if you would calculate the huge network so it is not necessary to estimate those networks in the one uh, workspace you can estimate them in different uh, workspaces so that would be my last example of today and um, actually let's uh, see what are the questions uh, uh, okay so uh, uh, the first question was about uh, like the last question I will go from the end uh, was about how many protection relays are in, uh, in the software and the library so we have library for uh, uh, circuit breakers we will cover this uh, topic more in uh, uh, another webinar uh, for uh, relays we do not provide library we provide the possibility to add functionalities like uh, any number of uh, uh, overcurrent steps any number of ground fault uh, steps voltage uh, under and over voltage steps so um, uh, not the library but functionality is provided in our software user can create any uh, relay uh, he has uh, so uh, library for the relays is not provided except for distance relays for distance relays so yes you can uh, have uh, Micom, ABB, uh, Schneider uh, and Siemens relays in the library but for uh, uh, breakers so we have uh, all the uh, actually most uh, common manufacturers which are used worldwide uh, yes the APSM provides relay settings uh, so the question would be yes uh, then uh, we have uh, one question uh, can uh, software perform uh, electromagnetic transient analysis so yes it can do and we also have uh, surge arrestor sizing uh, feature which allows uh, for us to uh, uh, select surge arrestor calculate uh, uh, how uh, uh, voltage will increase uh, voltage increase due for example due to lightning and whether these surge arresters will be capable to uh, reduce uh, the uh, reduce the uh, over voltage uh, transient analysis again the question whether software allows to do transient analysis so uh, allows to do electromagnetic transients dynamic transients uh, uh, we do not uh, sell this feature yet so it's uh, under testing uh, one more question can we uh, find calcul uh, can we calculate the efficiency of the whole plant in one click so it's a very uh, broad question depends what is the efficiency uh, so uh, whether it's losses uh, or efficiency of motors so the idea is this that if you have uh, all the motors specified and when you calculate power flow so yes software estimates the efficiency of all the motors we also have so-called uh, Sankey diagram and in this uh, Sankey diagram uh, basically you can see uh, what are the most uh, the biggest losses so here is the effective power of loads here is the inverter uh, consumed power and here are the losses like motor losses uh, motor uh, uh, mechanical power losses so like pump losses and then so on line losses for example here so yes by one click you can estimate uh, all the efficiency of the power plant so again many questions about the transient calculation 
there is one question if uh, illumination system design is included so illumination system design is not included uh, except maybe the question was regarding the solar installation so then it is possible to calculate solar yield using the software but uh, this uh, uh, this this webinar I won't I would not like to cover this topic maybe in other webinar about solar uh, solar uh, analysis uh, so video will be accessible through YouTube uh, the question uh, about pump library uh, yeah so if you buy a uh, uh, hydraulic uh, EAPSM uh, software so you get uh, also uh, uh, the uh, pump library so see that most of the questions Gintari uh, which is now operating the APSM uh, uh, li link is answered so some of the questions we will uh, look after the uh, uh, webinar and we will answer for example there is question whether it's uh, possible to add uh, uh, so the Vikas answered already that it is possible to add cable so thank you for Vikas who helped uh, to answer some of the questions so you see that you were very active uh, in the chat so thank you for that uh, maybe the last uh, uh, the last uh, part of the presentation would be that uh, we will have uh, more upcoming free webinars because I see that some of the questions of yours are regarding protection coordination so on the 3rd of the June there will be uh, uh, the whole uh, webinar only for protection coordination and we will definitely answer your questions regarding protection coordination uh, topic we will do a short circuit calculation sizing of over voltage over current relays ground fault relays and other type of the relays uh, we also we'll see uh, how the report can be made using the software or for example for uh, protection coordination then uh, there will be one more free webinar re regarding the harmonic mitigation study uh, again it will be on 2nd of July and here we will talk about power quality issues what are the most common solutions for power quality so we invite you to register for uh, these uh, free webinars and uh, we will answer uh, uh, questions related to these topics because as you can see software has many functionalities to this uh, to uh, talk about all of them during one seminar would be quite hard for those who want to uh, uh, go deep in uh, uh, this kind of electrotechnical calculation uh, so we are organizing also EAPSM Electric Academy uh, these are 16 hours uh, trainings uh again uh, through online uh, not through YouTube we will uh, use other platform where we can uh, communicate and discuss with you so uh, I would like to uh, for you to work uh, in parallel with me to do the same analysis so you can truly uh, know how to uh, use the software so here we will solve practical tasks and examples uh, and uh, what is good what is the benefit of these trainings is that uh, after them you will uh, get uh, uh, EAPSM electric for uh, two months so license free for two months so the cost of uh, two months license uh, would be uh, uh, over uh, maybe 500 euros uh, depends on the number of buses and you get this only for 290 euros uh, also you get personal consultations uh, up to five hours and if you will register till uh, 11th of May so it's already uh, yeah you have still some time left so it's the 7th of May so you have several days you will get 15% discount so even cheaper and if you are already APSM user you want to uh, maybe uh, update your knowledge with the current uh, version of the software so you can participate in the trainings with 50% discount so again for the trainings you can uh, register into them uh, info at energy advice or in our uh, website where you can uh, select the trainings uh, and uh, send the request to be registered so here are 16 hour trainings uh, for those who want to uh, get more information regarding uh, the software 
so uh, still we have some time and let's see what are uh, the questions left what are parameters to be selected uh, for different technology of wind turbine life um, dfg synchronous variable uh, speed output so maybe the last question i can answer so in case you are willing to design wind uh, turbines using uh, our software so basically uh, here you are, are capable to specify uh, or select from the library Ri library is still not very broad uh, data broad uh, like advanced data about the wind turbine so like uh, different uh, specifications regarding uh, mechanical details uh, rated power rated speed uh, uh, also uh, flickers uh, related data so uh, basically in this kind of library you can uh, specify many uh, things regarding the wind turbine this will allow you to estimate uh, different things like for example power quality issues regarding the wind turbine and uh, voltage levels uh, in the same way as I showed today so maybe this would be the last answer the time already is uh, gone for our webinar so it was uh, uh, for us it was uh, uh, we are very thankful that uh, so many of you have participated and I, I see that uh, quite a lot of you listened to the very end it was a long webinar two hours so thank you for your time uh, have a nice day or have a nice evening for those who are in different time zones and uh, we hope uh, you will uh, uh, join to our other uh, webinars free webinars also our other trainings uh, advanced trainings so here are our contacts uh, again if you would like to contact us skype email phone so you can just uh, send the, all the questions and requests to these uh, uh, sources or through linkedin so we will try to answer them so one more time thank you for your time and uh, have a nice evening bye